Okay, we're going to show you a gate system unlike any other customized by Electronic Interiors 2000. In this panel, we're using X10 and Leviton DHC modules. Now, there's a lot of controversy about X10. But as long as you set it up the way that it's set up here, you'll be fine. And make sure you have plenty of surge protection. Another advantage to using Leviton DHC is they have what's known as IntelliSense. And IntelliSense, what that means is it has an internal noise filter and automatic gain control. Okay, just letting you know. Right, moving on. Right here you'll see two universal mods, X10 Pro mods. Well, on some of these gates we have Leviton DHC. DV6337 modules. So yeah, they're interchangeable. All right. Left module is for exit. Right mod is for entrance. You simply push the button if you want to do a manual and the gate will open. Let me illustrate. Now when the gate gets to a fully open condition, it's going to confirm open and you'll hear it. Alright, it's fully open. Now it's going to go closed. Now you'll notice Maybe a little bit hard to see because it's black, but let me take you out there. <coughs> As a matter of fact, here comes a vehicle. We'll just watch this. Here comes a vehicle in. The gate's going open. Now on top of this pedestal, a motion detector. And it's pointed toward the road. Now if emergency personnel should come in and not use their siren, always punch a code in. Alright, I'm going to show you. The gates are closed right now. We'll punch the code in. Get the gates. And the gates are opening. Now, for, for a non-resident or a guest, all you have to do is come down here to the tele-entry system. Let me back out of it. And then just put a code in. If they need help, they can always hit the help key. To view the resident list, use the arrow keys. When you find the resident you want, enter the three-digit code found next to the name. To make a correction, use the hang-up key. All right, we're going to head back to the shack. And as we're heading back to the shack, I want you to take note of a couple things. We have photoelectrics. There's a reflector. Let me focus in on it. There's a reflector assembly over there. Here's a photoelectric right here. And an ox box. And the antenna for an RFID. And you'll notice we're using stainless steel hinges. We have a lifetime warranty, just to let you know. Over here we have the operators. That's our slave, and this is the master. Now on the pole, on the back side of the pole, we have an SOS, and that's for a siren operated sensor. So if they run their siren, the gates will automatically open up. We'll go back in.
back over here. Here's our relays. The first relay is for the left master. The second relay is for the right master or the entrance gate. The third relay is for the motion sensor because we don't drive anything off of the pilot relay that's in the component itself. It actually helps the relay contacts in the unit last longer by driving it to an operating relay. So we never drive anything off the pilot relay. Then this last relay is actually the fire department. Anything that has to do with the fire department, like the keypad that we were using for emergency personnel and the SOS. Okay? And the Knox box. Alright. This first power supply on the left is a 12 volt. That drives this relay board. It drives the reader and the reader interface. And it also drives the teleentry. Okay. Now this module here is a CM fifteen A made by X ten. And that's put in here for remote entry. So if you get on a computer, you can always open the gates. You can have an open house and set the system back to loop control instead of RFID control. Okay? Or you can have it so certain times of the day the gates just stay open. There's so many different things you can do. And actually with the controller being in here, you can control in this shack if you wanted to, you could shut the water off in the event that the temperature in the shack got too low that the pipes wouldn't freeze and bust and then you'd have water everywhere. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with that controller. You can turn lights on, you can shut off valves, irrigation, oh, hot water heater, numerous things for energy conservation and security. If you want to monitor, you can monitor the doors remotely and see whether or not the doors are open. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things you could do with this. Set up an alarm. All right, we're going to move off of that. Now, this is the second power supply. is a 24 volt DC. That powers our relays. That powers the motion detector out in the field. And it powers up the emergency keypads. Okay, now moving on. I'll go over this very briefly. This is the relay board with the USB interface to hook up to a computer so you can track people as they're coming in. Uh, you can give a specific person an ID. They'll have an RFID card and it'll keep a log and a report of each individual as they're coming in. And timestamp so you know when they're coming in, what, <coughs> what day, and all the pertinent information, you can even tie it into a photograph that comes up every time that person comes in so you can check to make sure that it is indeed the person that should be having a card. Okay, now we're going to move down. And here we have the APC UPS system right here. Okay, right beside of that we have the power blocker too. Now, You'll say, well, you have a UPS and a power blocker. With a power blocker, what the power blocker does is, if there is a surge, it actually not only protects your equipment, but it protects itself. Okay? Now, standard UPS systems will protect your equipment, but they normally won't protect themselves. So, in the event that a surge does occur, 
right? The lights go out. You still have UPS and you'll notice if you look up here on the power supplies, you still have a green light. Okay? So you still have power there. And the reader still has power. And you can hear the relay still going on and off. It's still picking up a card. So really, you can still um, keep track if you wanted to of who's trying to get in or who's in the area. Okay, we'll reestablish. We'll push this big button and you'll notice that the green and the red light will come back on. Green and red light. And you notice the UPS has stopped beeping. Now, if you want to do that remotely, if you want to do a, a remote reset, you can simply, you'll notice over here, I have a socket for power block reset. That power block reset will actually reset, reset the, uh, the power blocker too. Now, the only thing I haven't covered as of yet <coughs> is these two modules right here. These are actually input modules. Those modules up at the top are output modules and they tie directly into these relays down here which we had already gone over. This is the exit relay. This is the entrance relay. This is the motion relay. And again, this is the fire department relay. Okay. These two mods here are actually feeding back into the system. You'll hear it in a minute. Feeds into these modules to let us know that the gate is open. Okay. And the gate as you can see it's open. Now, if I want to test it, I can do that same thing. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Now we're going to go down to Betsy Ross and show you another system with a camera.